let's take a look at how we can make data persist so that when we return to levels later, it's still the same. It hasn't reset. Okay, so to get this going, I have two scenes here. Both of them have a static floor, as you can see here, both scene one and scene two. The difference is scene one has two characters. This can represent enemies, objects, whatever it is that you want to store is up to you. You would know it's your game. I'm just using these two characters as examples. And what I'm going to do is whenever I hit the escape key, they're going to jump to different positions on the screen and they're going to change color. And that's going to represent the data that I want to save in this case, right? The position and the color. All right, so scene one and scene two both have scripts on them. Scene two, all we're doing is printing out our name so you can see it in the output console. And whenever I hit UI accept, which is the enter key, all I'm gonna do is change to scene one. And on scene one, I'm gonna do that same thing. I'm printing the name when it runs. And when I hit the enter key, I'm gonna change to scene two. All right, and we can see that when it runs, all I do is just hit the enter key and we can see it printing out down there in the output. Scene one, scene two, scene one, scene two. All right. Now when I hit the escape key, the UI cancel action, I'm going to get my first character, which I just have the default name here being used. I'm going to move it on the screen and I'm going to color it red. Now to show this with two objects, because you'll probably have more than one object in a level. Um, I just have a, another one, right? Getting my other character. In this case, I named it Surfer Dude to see to show you that it doesn't matter what the name of the object is in here. So if you want to have default names, you could use them. If you want to use custom names, you could use those too. And the same thing, I'm just going to move it to a different spot on the screen and I'm going to color it purple. All right, so we take a look at that. I can hit us I can hit enter to get us over to scene one and I can hit escape and there they go one moves and turns purple the other moves and turns red now this is where the issue comes in for people right you take off you go to another level you go to another part of the map you go to a town whatever and then you come back to this other area or level later and everything's reset on you and you don't want that to reset so we're going to address this using a game manager. Some people uh, may call it the scene manager. I'm going to uncomment this out and I'm calling a load state function in the ready. And this game manager is just a auto load or you may know it by the name of a singleton. And if you never created one of those before, you just go into your file system, right click, create a new script, give it a name. Then head up to project settings, go to the auto load tab, hit this browse button, select your script and you can hit add. Now the default name that it has is going to be the same name as the script itself. If you want to change that name, you can just keep in mind that name that you give it is how you're going to access uh, everything on that script. So in my case, it's called game manager. So I have to type that in here and then I can access the function I created load state and pass in the scene name likewise uh, before i change scenes i'm going to want to save data right so i'm going to get my first character i'm going to get the name of the scene and then i'm going to call my save state function that will create pass in the scene name my character's name my character's position and it's modulate, right? The color. And I'm going to do the same thing with my second character. I'm going to get it, call save state, pass in the scene name, my character, this, uh, my second character's name, position, and modulate color. Now, how does the save state and load state work? Well, let's take a look at the save state first. All right, so when I go to the game manager, you can see I have a dictionary here called persistent data. And this is the data that I want to save in between levels. Now, the way this is going to save 
is I want you to take a look at the output console here just so that we can see it right and now I'm going to close that so we can see we're going to be under scene one so we got the scene name being used here and then we're going to use that in order to access all the information right so let's say we come back to scene one later we're going to see that we have scene one data and then we're going to use all this data here that we stored into it in order to fix or give the illusion that this data persisted right and that nothing ever changed right that character is still dead that chest is still open right whatever it is you can see each character has its own individual piece of data right so how do we create that well i'm gonna say if not persistent data dot has c name so if we don't already have have a scene one information or scene two information or scene three scene four whatever it is in this case we'll go with scene one so if we don't have scene one information then i'm going to create an entry into our dictionary for scene one's data all right so once that's done then we can just call persistent data scene name all right so we're going to go into scene one we're going to pass an object data remember is our character's name so character body 2d and surfer dude respectively when we call this we're going to set that to being a new dictionary and then we can go inside of it and set the position and color keys to be in the position and color we passed in and then i just print it out so we can see it so as we can see the first time we called it we have data for the first character and then we called save state for a second time and passed in the data for the second character and we can see we have scene one our first character is in there and then right after that we have our second character and his data is put in there so with that when we call load state up here in the ready function remember game manager load state and just pass in the c name that's all we're doing that's all we need to do so now in our load state we're going to get c name passed into us which will be in this case scene one all right so we're going to take a look if persistent data has scene name so if we have data for scene one here then we're going to go ahead and access it and what we're going to do for that is we're going to create a variable called scene data that's a dictionary and we're going to go persistent data scene name all right so at this point scene data is just this information all right so it's just all the data stored or all the data related to that specific scene and that scene only all right so for key in scene data dot keys so these keys are going to be character body 2d and surfer dude here now of course you don't have to put key you can put whatever you want right enemies chest whatever makes sense for your game and what we need to do is since we don't know where it is in the scene tree now you might be super or hyper organized and have specific location for all of these to look but in my case i don't know maybe i have chests in one area maybe i have enemies in another area in my scene hierarchy so they're all separate and split up and i don't know where they're going to be so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to create a variable called target now i'm casting this as a node 2d and all this is going to do is um as long as it comes from a node 2d which is basically going to be any blue node right any 2d node then i can cast it just fine now if you know what it is if all of your enemies are character bodies then go ahead and by all means cast as character bodies that's perfectly fine in fact the more you can narrow that down the better it probably is all right so how do we get this well we use get tree dot root and if your game is running if you've never seen root before you'll notice there is a remote tab right above your scene now when your game is running you'll have remote you click on it this is the live view of your scene all right, so I'm going to go ahead and just jump it over to scene one so we can see this. 
pull that up. I'll hit enter and we can see that changed here in remote. So if I open this up, so what we're doing, we're going to get this tree. We're going to get the root. So we're up here and we're going to say, Hey, find a child called key, right? Whatever this is. So remember it's going to be character body 2d and it's going to be surfer dude. And then we have two other optional parameters to pass in. So true. We want it to be recursive so we can keep diving inside and we want this to be false. I'm not a hundred percent sure how this works. I have two ideas, but since this is not a direct child of root, basically it's going to come back false, even if it's there. So if we set this to false, uh, so if we set owner here to false, then we can actually find our child. So just remember that key, true and false. And if I hold control, I can click on find child and uh, there's the information. If you want to read it, maybe you can get a better understanding. Um, here it is. If owned is true, only descendants will with a valid owner, owner uh, node are checked. So if you can understand that in a better way, great. If not, don't worry about it. Just remember you need key true false right so on our first run through we're going to be grabbing character body 2d because that was our first item added into that list i'll go ahead and swap again so we can see that dictionary All right so the first key is character body 2d so we're going to look through and we're going to find it in scene one we're going to say cool we've got it that is now target so now we're going to set the position of that target to the data that we stored scene data key and position same thing with the color target dot modulate to scene data key and color and since this is a for loop and we have more keys in there so the next one's going to be surfer dude we're going to do that again so we're going to get the target we're going to tell it to find the key or find child surfer dude true and false and then we're going to set the surfer dude's position the scene data key position and target so the surfer dude modulate is going to be scene data key color and that's going to be used to restore their data and remember we call that inside of the ready function and the ready function is going to run as soon as that scene loads All right so we have information even if they stay down there you can see in the output that data is stored cool and if we change that data and we change scenes, that data is going to be overwritten with new information. As you can see right there. So you can go ahead and compare those. The color is different. Their positions are different. And when we return, that new data is what gets loaded and applied to the correct objects. All right. So that'll do it for uh, this week's video. Hopefully that helps you with learning how to uh, create or allow some of your data to persist after you've changed levels and come back or change areas and come back and so on, right, etc. But all right, take care. Have yourselves a good one. Uh, this morning is kind of sucks. OBS has been a pain in the butt. This is like my sixth time trying to record this. It just keeps freezing up for whatever reason. But all right. Take care, have yourselves a good one, and I'll see you guys next time.